Right, hello, welcome back, welcome back to the indoor putting area. So before I get into today's video, I need to apologise, because as you may notice, there was no video yesterday. What's happened was, it wasn't this video, it's another one, it's a file that I have ready to go, ready to be uploaded. Got to about 11 o'clock at night, and then the internet decided to go really slow, so I realised I weren't able to get it uploaded in time. So, as a bit of a gift to say sorry to you guys, there'll be two uploads today. So we've got this video and one more coming, so stay tuned for that a little bit later on. Right, putting tips. And in this video, we're going to talk about how to stop that dreaded loop in your putting stroke. So without further ado, let's get into it. Right, first and foremost, do you recognise this putting stroke? If either of those two putting strokes look like your putting stroke, here's a super simple solution on how to fix it. Right, so in order to take that loop out of the transition in your putting stroke, so stop you doing that or stop you doing that, super simple idea. Take a back stroke, the usual length as to what you would a normal putting stroke, but what I want you to do is pause for around two to three seconds. What this does, it eradicates that kind of overflow from the back swing into the through swing, and it means that you're able to eradicate that loop. So let me show you one. So set up as a normal, we take a normal back swing, but we pause for two to three seconds. One, two, three, and then make a through stroke. You'll notice that in that putting stroke there was no loop in transition, it was just a nice straight back swing and a nice follow through. The loop in transition can cause you to pull putts, push putts, all things that will contribute to you missing either left or right of the hole. So what you need to do is take a normal back stroke, hold it for two to three seconds and then work it into a down swing. Straight in the middle, get in. Right, next up, next drill, you're going to be needing a couple of these. They don't necessarily have to be cans of Blue Moon Belgian White Ale. I'm not sponsored by these in any way, I just like them. It could be bottles of water, it could be cups of tea, out like that, but we're going to be improving your path of your putting stroke and we're going to be improving your strikes. So let me show you how to do that. Right, so here's how you set this one up. Put your putter so that it is lined up to the target. And then what we have to do is we have to put a can either side of your putter. Now, like I said a little bit earlier, this does a few things, so it helps you with your strike. If you were to produce a toe strike, you'd be noticing that you hit this inside can. If you were to produce a heel strike, you'd notice that you clip this outside can. It also helps your path, so if you're someone that's very good at delivering a square face, square face to your target, but you move the putter too much in this direction, you're probably going to want to clip that can and clip that can. Similarly, similarly, if you've got an out to in swing path, you're going to probably want to clip that can and then this can on the way through. So obviously the easier you want to make this for yourself, move those cans slightly further away. The harder you want to make it for yourself, as I'm going to do today, move them slightly closer together. Another big advantage choosing something like this is that it affects the line angle of your putter. So if you're someone who uh, lets the hands drop, you'll notice that this shaft wants to uh, lean itself onto this uh, near side can. One thing that we know is that as soon as you get the line angle flatter, the putter wants to work in more of an arc, meaning that the face has to roll open and closed a little bit more. So if you're thinking more along the lines of a Steve Stricker putting stroke where he's got the handle quite high and quite an upright line angle, that putter then just wants to work straight back, straight through a little bit more. That's why I like the height of these cans as opposed to just a couple of coins on the ground. But like I said earlier, you could use cups of tea, bottles of water, anything of that kind. Only thing left to do now is give it a go. There we go. Right, and then the last little tip today, we're still using the cans, but this is more focused on the length of your putting stroke and the tempo of it. Right, so what you need to do for this last one is set up the two cans, which will represent the entire length of your stroke. So from ball to the back can, that's your back stroke, and from ball to the uh, front can, that's going to account for the, the entirety of the downstroke. What this does is it helps you with your tempo of your putting stroke. So if you can keep it within this range, you make sure that the back swing is the same length as the through swing and you can keep a nice good tempo. It just eradicates those little jabby ones. So some um, examples of putting strokes that I see from golfers that struggle with pace control, they're like real short back swings and then they have to accelerate loads on the through swing. You see putts coming up short, going way too far when they're doing that kind of stuff. And the big one for me that I like to eradicate is the long, languid backswing but then loads of deceleration that way through and then we see him missing lots of putts short so get that ball set up right in the middle of those two objects feel as though that from can to can that's the entire length of your putting stroke so hopefully you can control the length of that swing a little bit better control your pace on the greens a little bit better and it's also a good visual for you to see 
how your putting stroke is working in comparison to how it should be. And so last but not least, the main reason why I use cans of beer instead of anything else is because I use it as an incentive. So if I knock 10 putts in a row, I'm cracking one open and I'm having one. If I knock nine in a row and miss one, no. No beer, you have to do 10 in a row, that's the rules. Right, so there you go guys, three more indoor putting tips that you can do at home. As ever, if you've liked this video, please make sure you're doing the usuals, liking, sharing, subscribing. Like I said earlier, I'll see you a little bit later on today with another video, and then we're back with the usual schedule starting from tomorrow. So, stay indoors, stay safe, see you there, layers.